Okay guys, so in the last video I showed you how we can use the uh, math node to be able to get some movement outside of using expressions because expressions are very counterintuitive in the fact that if you have multiple mechanical rigs it's going to bog down a scene because it literally does math in the background and calculates every frame based on the variables that you've put in. So what we're going to do now, you can see I have my little controller moved around. I'm going to actually unparent this for a second. So let's go to our group that we had before. Uh, let me see here. Open her up. There we go. Mech arm. We're going to unparent him from this guy. We're going to make it so he, they're not unparented anymore. So let's go and unparent that. And the reason why, we're going to start from scratch. We'll see that these guys still work based on our movement, which is great. Based on our last video when we set that up. But this time what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to start making the bones and placing the bones. And we did a little bit of this in class. So uh, what I'll do is uh, let's go and start from the side. It's always good to start from your side view. There we go. And uh, from here, we'll start laying out the bones. So this part's not going to move. I mean, I made a hinge, so if you want it to move, you can. Just be aware that there's going to be geometry clipping, so you need to raise that pretty far up. Um, again, I said you can modify this any way that you want. I do not care. Um, it's all gravy. <coughs> Let's go to the side here. Let me go and create our skeleton. Let's go to our joint tool. Double click on it, double check our variables, so thinks that we're good to go. If you're not sure what those variables are, you can go and look at the previous videos. So I'm going to create a one initial bone here. Now we have to look at our structure too. Let's see what our structure looks like. So we can see this bone or this piece of geo is actually an extension of itself. So we can actually make the bone here and then maybe even parent this guy, do a math node or a SDK to have that rotate as things move around, which would be kind of cool. And this one's just a, a sphere by itself, so we need to just maybe put a bone here and parent him underneath that bone. So if you're rigid binding or you're smooth binding, you've got to be aware where all the pieces go and how they're supposed to move. This is a little bit of a flexor in here. You can actually do a rigid bind with a flexor, or you can actually make it smooth bind. Uh, we found out in class that a rigid bind works pretty well with that. works really nicely. And a lot of times rigid bind is pretty much the only one you're going to be using when it comes to mechanical rigging. Um, but in this case, we're going to do a combination of them. So I'm going to show you how we can do rigid bind in the center. And then on these little arm type weird appendages things, we can do uh, smooth bind. Click here. There we go. We've got that bone ready to go. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to keep that bone by itself. And the reason why, because I'm going to rigid bind this area here with this rigid bound, I can't have two bones in here. I gotta be careful because I could end up rigid binding geometry that I don't want. Rigid bound. Let's do another one here. Do one here. And finally I'll do one here. Let me lower my joint size. They're a little bit crazy. That works good. Let's make sure the bones are in the right spot. From what I remember, they're a little bit off. There we go. Let's put it in its place. And if you can't see them, remember, you can do your x-ray joints. <coughs> I should just make a hotkey for it, but not today. Alright, so I put a little generic sphere in here if you want a little uh, pivot. You can add whatever you want. In this case, we could even grab this and lower it down a little bit to make it a little more centered with that weird sphere. It's magnetic. It's like Iron Man. Alright, so let's go and parent what we need to parent. We also need to make a telescoping joint here, too, which we'll do um, the next video. I'll already have it made, and I'll put it into place. Now, if you don't remember how to do a telescopic joint, refer to the video that shows you how. So we go and grab this piece of geo. I'm going to shift select this bone and hit P. So I'm going to parent it so that when this bone moves, it moves. And um, let me see here. And we'll grab this guy. We'll put him underneath this whole system. 
and hit P and him too. I can put him underneath the system. Hit P. So when I hit this, all of three of these guys, like we did in class, should be selected. All right. Cool. So we got that there. And then the last one I'm going to grab, and I'm going to shift select this bone here. And what we're going to do now, we're going to bind our skin. We're going to rigid bind it. Let's pull it up the options and take a look at this. Now, we're going to do the complete skeleton is fine. We can also do selected joints. <coughs> now, you do have to be careful when you do selected joints because you have to make sure your joint is placed in the right spot and your geo is lined up with it correctly. This is what I meant by being careful. This is why I segmented these guys out so there's no kind of uh, questioning of what we want to isolate. You can connect these after the fact though, which is great. So you have that option either way. So let's go in here and we'll just do complete skeleton for now. There we go. Let's test out locally how this looks. And actually, if you look at it, it's actually not too bad. This is doing pretty well. Not too shabby. And if you ever want to paint your weights on this, because I said you do have that option, you can actually go in here and paint on cluster weights tool. And it allows you to paint. Unfortunately, it's only locally with that bone, only with particular bones. It doesn't push it to other areas or you can't you don't really have a lot of shuffling power and if I show you this you can see you have clusters those are the two joints that are actually bound to this you can go to that one or you can go to that one that's pretty much it so uh, not a lot of control on that level so let's go in here go back to our geo and let's grab our bone for a second and we're gonna go in here and add a thing called a flexor so we're going to go in here and go to Edit Rigid Bind and create a flexor. Now there's a, you can reassign a bone, lattice, joint. Um, you can preserve skin groups if you want to. Now we're not going to get too much into these. Uh, rigid Bind is very old school. What Rigid Bind is used for mainly is for like mechanical rigs or straight up for posing a character. Most of the time you'll see people who rig will use this smooth bind. But Rigibine keeps things pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and it was one of the very first rigging uh, options that came out in Alias back in the day. Smooth did not really come out and get perfected until like, well, I shouldn't say perfected. They didn't really introduce that until Maya 1, and then it had a lot of issues still at that time. All right, so let's go in here and create a flexor. We're going to do a lattice, and usually they come in pretty big. Let's keep it pretty simple. We'll do... Uh, two, two, and two. We could even do three if we want. All right, let me go back a little bit here. Looks like I didn't have it in by pose. That's okay. Yeah, make sure. There we go. Back to by pose. You make sure you do that. Notice we had a warning there. Myzel, you. It's not recommended that you do by with do this without by pose. So you have to do it with by pose. That was my wise old man voice. If you're wondering, so we'll do two here. A little height, width, and depth here. Hit create. Close. And let's test it out. It's actually not too bad. Yeah, cool. Nice evenly weight. So you see the lattice can help with flexing. It, it's almost like it evenly distributes the weights a little bit more. So you could even bypass painting weights. And again, it's only locally when you paint weight. Alright, so let's go in here and uh, test out the move one more time. Actually pretty good. So we got this set up here. We got our initial bone here. We got our bone up here. So let's go ahead and get the bones in here into the fingers. This part's a little tricky because you have to figure out how it's going to move. And the way I built it, I have it so it rotates on the edges, which is actually pretty cool. But on top of that, we can actually have it so that you can have uh, little flexors in here. I mean, or flexors or even smooth bind. In this case, I'm going to do smooth bind. I'm going to move a bone to each edge. We'll do that real quick. I'll do one, and then when I get the video back on, you'll see that I'll have them all put together. That way you don't completely fall asleep and die. So we'll go in here. We'll go to a different angle. That's always the best way to do it. Now we get more of a straight approach. Check your edges, even though it is mechanical, you want to place it on areas where you know it's going to flex. 
and typically you want to have at least try or three edges to deal with. I'm going to do that one and then we'll do the miscellaneous one at the top. So voila! Looks like we got all of our fingers together. Isn't that great? So there's multiple ways to do this too. Um, you can duplicate rotate. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll simply go into that view like you know maybe down view, up view, whatever angle I'm looking at and I just build it and then just transform it, move it into that spot that it needs to be. Um, especially if it's not built on the origin. This guy did not come in as an in at the origin so we have to move him into place. So let's talk about order of operations here. We're gonna have to actually get this guy to move correctly and we don't want to double transform it. You saw in class we had a double transform and I'll show you how to fix that. Um, what can happen is we rigid bound this guy but he's in a group so that can be difficult. Let me show you how we can fix that. I'm simply going to grab him and remove him from it. I can middle mouse drag. This is the quick way to do it. And this, make sure it's a single line and let go. Now you'll see this guy take off. Don't freak out. When it comes to um, a painted weight object that gets tricky. And I'll show you how we can fix that too. But let's go in here. We can grab him and unlock it. Let's unlock. So this is the danger. of This is where groups work backwards. I was going to do this ahead of time but I want to show you how to fix this because I'm pretty sure some of you guys are going to run, it, run into this. You might even group accidentally ahead of time. I only did it for demo purposes, but here I can show you how to solve it. Um, unlock selected. There you go. Cool. So let's go in here and now I'm translated into place. Now it being rigid bind, this is actually kind of nice because rigid bind is local anyway. But we still want to make sure this guy's in the right spot. We really do. Okay, double check. Could probably moved over a little bit to the right a little bit there. Cool. So we got him into place. Now let's see what else we have. Let's see who else is underneath. Now these guys are underneath it too. Um, luckily they're not bound yet. We haven't bound them yet so we're good to go. So let's go and grab them. They may shift their original position. Now if you try to un group them you'll see Maya says leaf level transform. That's because it's recorded your movement after that group and the information that it's had is conflicting with what you want to do right now. So what you can do is you can unparent it or simply do what I do what I did just a minute ago by grabbing these guys and getting a single line and moving them down there. And that actually works pretty well. You see they did not shift position. Now if you bound skin and you did that you would see it move just like the rigid bind. It would take off over here to Fresno. Yes I pick on Fresno because it's really far and it smells like cow. Alright so we go over here and uh, Grab the rest of these guys. And again, name these guys as you go. You're like, well, how come you didn't name them, Sean? Oh, I'm sorry. It's a free arm. All right, don't complain. So let's go over here and drag this down. Son of a gun. Grab that down there. And uh, we'll go and grab the rest of these pieces. Sweet. Got these guys all named for you. Bunch of winners. Let's go ahead and pull this down here. Doosh, there we go. So we got it so they're all by themselves. So this group now should only have that controller from the other side. This is from a previous demo. That's fine. We don't care. Um, let me see here. We can just nuke these guys if we want to. Cool. We can still test this out. Working good. So we're good. So that's a quick way to separate those guys out. So now that they're separated out, we're going to talk about parenting order. We need to get all this parented correctly. But first, let's smooth bind the fingers. So we're going to grab the bone root and grab the finger. Root, finger, un Und root und finger. Oh, sorry, that's my German ancestors I was channeling. There we go. We got that all set up and ready to go. So let's go and do a smooth bind. Open up smooth bind. Set that to three. Um, interactive is what I like to keep it. Classic linear is fine. And we hit bind skin. There we go. At first you're like, oh god, only bound one. Nope, it's good. It's kind of like getting a basket of chicken fingers. Look at that. You got more than one. Oh yeah, they're all together. So let's go and parent these guys in the right order. So we put a bone in here, and what we want to do now is parent him underneath this guy, this bone. 
You can even do it under the geo if you want to, because the geo is driven by the bone. And we're going to put a controller there to be able to control that neck pivot. Also, you want to parent that bone underneath the bone there, right here, underneath, right there. You want him parented underneath this guy. So let's go and get this guy parented appropriately. Grab him. Shift select the bone or the geo. Hit P. Now when you grab this guy, you'll see that it moves around. Let's hit the uh, rotation. And hit plus whenever your rotation is too small and you can't seem to get it. Or minus to lower it. Let's see it move around. Cool. Now we got that movement and that's nice. That's believable. It looks like a mechanical machine. Um, a mechanical machine. Hmm. That made no sense. A machine from the future. Sounds cooler. So it looks like uh, now we got that working. So what we need to do is make sure all these uh, little robotic fingers are underneath the head of this robot arm. So this can be considered the head because it's the very front, the very tip, and the pivotal point to be able to target these fingers wherever we want them. So pretty much using our imagination. So again, I said you can add whatever you want as long as it has some believable functionality. So let's go in here and uh, parent these guys underneath the head. Hit P. You can do it individually if you want to. Or you can simply just grab them one by one. Make sure you watch what you're grabbing. That's really important when it comes to mechanical rigging. You can screw things up really quickly. And then we'll do Shift, Select this guy. Hit P. So now, when it rotates, and this is going to be nifty, watch for it, wait for it, we have a fully rotating robotic uh, arm right there. Pretty cool. Nice little head swivel. And we can check our parenting order. Oh, what's that? Got this all set up so far. Grab this on the bottom. Yeah, look at that, look at that, look at that. Isn't that cool? So now, you can move this, and the arm's movable. And if we want, we can put the rest of the geo that can be the parent of this guy. So we'll grab this guy. Let's actually just grab it uniformly all at once. Just makes things easier. Awesome. So we can grab our bone there. And then shift select. Grab all of these parts. Did a quick selection ahead of time there just to see if I... I don't forgot what I built in here. Get all sorts of pieces. There we go. And then we can hit P at that point. And test it out. So see if this translates that you want. Look at that. Trans nice, translates nice and smooth. So what we'll do now, the next thing we'll do, is build the telescopic joints. And I'll do that outside of the video, because I already have a video on how to do it. And what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to actually parent these correctly so that they move and shift like actual pistons. All right, cool.